This article is related to the study of self-replicating units of culture, not to be confused with mimesis. Mimetics is a theory of mental content based on an analogy with Darwinian evolution, originating from the popularization of Richard Dawkins' 1976 book The Selfish Gene. Proponents describe mimetics as an approach to evolutionary models of cultural information transfer. The meme, analogous to a gene, was conceived as a unit of culture which is hosted in the minds of one or more individuals and which can reproduce itself, thereby jumping from mind to mind. Thus what would otherwise be regarded as one individual influencing another to adopt a belief is seen as an idea replicator reproducing itself in a new host. As with genetics, particularly under a Dorkishan interpretation, a meme's success may be due to its contribution to the effectiveness of its host. Mimetics is also notable for sidestepping the traditional concern with the truth of ideas and beliefs. Instead, it is interested in their success. The Usenet newsgroup Alt.Mimetics started in 1993 with peak posting years in the mid to late 1990s. The Journal of Mimetics was published electronically from 1997 to 2005. History In his book The Selfish Gene, the evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins used the term meme to describe a unit of human cultural transmission analogous to the gene, arguing that replication also happens in culture, albeit in a different sense. Ted Cloak had briefly outlined a similar hypothesis in 1975, which Dawkins referenced. Cultural evolution itself is a much older topic, with a history that dates back to Darwin's era. Dawkins contended that the meme is a unit of information residing in the brain and is the mutating replicator in human cultural evolution. It is a pattern that can influence its surroundings, that is, it has causal agency, and can propagate. This created great debate among sociologists, biologists, and scientists of other disciplines. Because Dawkins himself did not provide a sufficient explanation of how the replication of units of information in the brain controls human behavior, and ultimately culture. Since the principal topic of the book was genetics, Dawkins apparently did not intend to present a comprehensive theory of memetics in the selfish gene, but rather coined the term meme in a speculative spirit. Accordingly, the term, unit of information, came to be defined in different ways by many scientists. The modern memetics movement dates from the mid-1980s. A January 1983 metamagical theme as column by Douglas Hofstarter, in Scientific American, was influential as was his 1985 book of the same name. Mimeticist was coined as analogous to geneticist originally in the selfish gene. Later R. L. Lucas suggested that the discipline that studies memes and the connections to human and other carriers of them be known as mimetics by analogy with genetics. Dawkins of the selfish gene has been a factor in drawing in people of disparate intellectual backgrounds. Another stimulus was the publication in 1991 of Consciousness Explained by Tufts University philosopher Daniel Dennett, which incorporated the meme concept into a theory of the mind. In his 1991 essay, Viruses of the Mind, Richard Dawkins used memetics to explain the phenomenon of religious belief and the various characteristics of organized religions. By then, memetics had also become a theme appearing in fiction. The idea of language as a virus had already been introduced by William S. Burroughs as early as 1962 in his book The Ticket That Exploded, and later in The Electronic Revolution. Published in 1970 in The Job and is also explored in Media Virus by Douglas Rushkoff in 1995. However, the foundation of memetics in full modern incarnation originates in the publication in 1996 of two books by authors outside the academic mainstream, Virus of the Mind, The New Science of the Meme by former Microsoft executive turned motivational speaker and professional poker player, Richard Brody, and Thought Contagion. How Belief Spreads Through Society by Aaron Lynch, a mathematician and philosopher who worked for many years as an engineer at Fermilab. 
Lynch claimed to have conceived his theory totally independently of any contact with academics in the cultural evolutionary sphere, and apparently was not even aware of Dawkins or the selfish gene until his book was very close to publication. Around the same time as the publication of the books by Lynch and Brody the e-journal Journal of Memetics, Evolutionary Models of Information, Transmission appeared on the web. It was first hosted by the Centre for Policy Modelling at Manchester Metropolitan University but later taken over by Francis Halion of the CLEAR Research Institute at the Vrij Universiteit Brussel. The e-journal soon became the central point for publication and debate within the nascent memeticist community. In 1999, Susan Blackmore, a psychologist at the University of the West of England, published The Meme Machine, which more fully worked out the ideas of Dennett, Lynch, and Brody and attempted to compare and contrast him with various approaches from the cultural evolutionary mainstream, as well as providing novel and controversial, memetics-based theories for the evolution of language and the human sense of individual selfhood. The term, meme, the term, meme, derives from the ancient Greek mu iota mu eta tau eta sigma, meaning, imitator, pretender. The similar term, nomi, was used in 1904, by the German evolutionary biologist Richard Seaman, best known for his development of the Engram theory of memory. In his work Dynamischen Empfindungen in Iron Bezjahung und zu den Original Empfindungen, translated into English in 1921 as the NAMI, until Daniel Schachter published Forgotten Ideas, Neglected Pioneers, Richard Seaman and the Story of Memory in 2000, Seaman's work had little influence though it was quoted extensively in Erwin Schrödinger's prescient 1956 Tana lecture, Mind and Matter. Richard Dawkins apparently coined the word meme, independently of Seaman, writing this. Mimim comes from a suitable Greek root, but I want a monosyllable that sounds a bit like gene. I hope my classicist friends will forgive me if I abbreviate mimim to meme. If it is any consolation, it could alternatively be thought of as being related to memory, or to the French word meme. Maturity in 2005, the Journal of Memetics, Evolutionary Models of Information Transmission ceased publication and published a set of articles on the future of memetics. The website states that although there was to be a relaunch, after several years nothing has happened. Susan Blackmore has left the University of the West of England to become a freelance science writer and now concentrates more on the field of consciousness and cognitive science. Derek Gatherer moved to work as a computer programmer in the pharmaceutical industry, although he still occasionally publishes on memetics-related matters. Richard Brody is now climbing the world professional poker rankings. Aaron Lynch disowned the memetics community and the words meme and memetics, adopting the self-description thought contagionist. Lynch lost his previous funding from a private sponsor and after his book royalties declined, he was unable to support himself as a private memetics thought contagion consultant. He died in 2005. Susan Blackmore restated the definition of meme as Whatever is copied from one person to another person, whether habits, skills, songs, stories, or any other kind of information. Further she said that memes, like genes, are replicators in the senses defined by Dawkins. That is, they are information that is copied. Memes are copied by imitation, teaching and other methods. The copies are not perfect. Memes are copied with variation, moreover, they compete for space in our memories and for the chance to be copied again. Only some of the variants can survive. The combination of these three elements forms precisely the condition for Darwinian evolution, and so memes evolve. Large groups of memes that are copied and passed on together are called co-adapted meme complexes, or memeplexes. In her definition, the way that a meme replicates is through imitation. 
This requires brain capacity to generally imitate a model or selectively imitate the model. Since the process of social learning varies from one person to another, the imitation process cannot be said to be completely imitated. The sameness of an idea may be expressed with different memes supporting it. This is to say that the mutation rate in mimetic evolution is extremely high, and mutations are even possible within each and every interaction of the imitation process. It becomes very interesting when we see that a social system composed of a complex network of micro-interactions exists. But at the macro level an order emerges to create culture, internalists and externalists. The mimetics movement split almost immediately into two. The first group were those who wanted to stick to Dawkins' definition of a meme as a unit of cultural transmission. Gibran Burchett, another mimeticist responsible for helping to research and co-coin the term mimetic engineering, along with Levis Rolando and Larry Lotman, has stated that a meme can be defined more precisely as a unit of cultural information that can be copied, located in the brain. This thinking is more in line with Dawkins' a second definition of the meme in his book The Extended Phenotype. The second group wants to redefine memes as observable cultural artifacts and behaviors. However, in contrast to those two positions, Blackmore does not reject either concept of external or internal memes. These two schools became known as the internalists and the externalists. Prominent internalists included both Lynch and Brody, the most vocal. Externalists included Derek Gatherer, a geneticist from Liverpool John Moores University, and William Benzone, a writer on cultural evolution and music. The main rationale for externalism was that internal brain entities are not observable, and memetics cannot advance as a science especially a quantitative science, unless it moves its emphasis onto the directly quantifiable aspects of culture. Internalists counted with various arguments that brain states will eventually be directly observable with advanced technology, that most cultural anthropologists agree that culture is about beliefs and not artifacts, or that artifacts cannot be replicators in the same sense as mental entities are replicators. The debate became so heated that a 1998 symposium on memetics, organized as part of the 15th International Conference on Cybernetics, passed a motion calling for an end to definitional debates. McNamara demonstrated in 2011 that functional connectivity profiling using neuroimaging tools enables the observation of the processing of internal memes, I memes, in response to external e memes. An advanced statement of the internalist school came in 2002 with the publication of The Electric Meme by Robert Ormger, an anthropologist from the University of Cambridge. Ormger also organized a conference in Cambridge in 1999 at which prominent sociologists and anthropologists were able to give their assessment of the progress made in memetics to that date. This resulted in the publication of Darwinizing Culture, The Status of Memetics as a Science, edited by Ormgrid with a foreword by Dennett, in 2000. Criticism This evolutionary model of cultural information transfer is based on the concept that units of information, or memes, have an independent existence, a self-replicating, and a subject to selective evolution through environmental forces. Starting from a proposition put forward in the writings of Richard Dawkins, it has since turned into a new area of study, one that looks at the self-replicating units of culture. It has been proposed that just as memes are analogous to genes, memetics is analogous to genetics. Critics contend that some proponents' assertions are untested, unsupported or incorrect. Louis Bennett as Briesgar, a critic of memetics calls it a pseudoscientific dogma and a dangerous idea that poses a threat to the serious study of consciousness and cultural evolution, among other things. As factual criticism, he refers to the lack of a code script for memes, as the DNA is for genes, and to the fact that the meme mutation mechanism is too unstable, which would render the evolutionary process chaotic.
Another criticism comes from semiotics, stating that the concept of meme is a primitivized concept of sign. Meme is thus described in memetics as a sign without its triadic nature. In other words, meme is a degenerate sign, which includes only its ability of being copied. Accordingly, in the broadest sense, the objects of copying are memes, whereas the objects of translation and interpretation are signs. Mary Midgley criticizes memetics for at least two reasons. One, culture is not best understood by examining its smallest parts, as culture is pattern-like, comparable to an ocean current. Many more factors, historical and others, should be taken into account and only whatever particle culture is built from. Two, if memes are not thoughts, as Daniel C. Dennett insists in Darwin's dangerous idea, then their ontological status is open to question, and memeticists may be challenged whether memes even exist. Questions can extend to whether the idea of meme is itself a meme, or is a true concept. Fundamentally, memetics is an attempt to produce knowledge through organic metaphors, which as such is a questionable research approach, as the application of metaphors has the effect of hiding that which does not fit within the realm of the metaphor. Rather than study actual reality, without preconceptions, memetics, as so many of the sociobiological explanations of society, believe that saying that the apple is like an orange is a valid analysis of the apple. Like other critics, Maria Kronfeltner has criticized memetics for being based on an allegedly inaccurate analogy with the gene. Alternately, she claims it is heuristically trivial, being a mere redescription of what is already known without offering any useful novelty. New Developments Dawkins in A Devil's Chaplain responded that there are actually two different types of mimetic processes. The first is a type of cultural idea, action, or expression, which does have high variance. For instance, a student of his who had inherited some of the mannerisms of Wittgenstein. However, he also describes a self-correcting meme, highly resistant to mutation. As an example of this, he gives origami patterns in elementary schools, except in rare cases. The meme is either passed on in the exact sequence of instructions, or terminates. This type of meme tends not to evolve, and to experience profound mutations in the rare event that it does. Another definition, given by Hoki Situnkia, tried to offer a more rigorous formalism for the meme, memeplexes, and the deem. Seeing the meme as a cultural unit in a cultural complex system, it is based on the Darwinian genetic algorithm with some modifications to account for the different patterns of evolution seen in genes and memes. In the method of memetics as the way to see culture as a complex adaptive system, he describes a way to see memetics as an alternative methodology of cultural evolution. However, there are as many possible definitions that are credited to the word meme. For example, in the sense of computer simulation the term memetic algorithm is used to define a particular computational viewpoint. The possibility of quantitative analysis of memes using neuroimaging tools and the suggestion that such studies have already been done was given by McNamara. This author proposes hyperscanning as a key tool in the future for investigating memetics. Velikovsky proposed the pollen as the structure of the meme, synthesizing the major theories on memes of Richard Dawkins, Miley C. Six and Miley O. Wilson, Frederick Turner and Arthur Koesler, proponents of memetics as described in the Journal of Memetics. Evolutionary models of information transmission believe that memetics has the potential to be an important and promising analysis of culture using the framework of evolutionary concepts. Keith Henson in Memetics and the Modular Mind makes the case that memetics needs to incorporate evolutionary psychology to understand the psychological traits of a meme's host. This is especially true of time-varying meme amplification host traits, such as those leading to wars. De Carlo. De Carlo argues that as human consciousness evolved and developed, so too did our ancestors' capacity to consider and attempt to solve environmental problems in more conceptually sophisticated ways. 
understood in this way, problem solving amongst a particular group, when considered satisfactory, often produces a feeling of environmental control, stability, in short, mimetic equilibrium. But the payoff is not merely practical, providing purely functional utility, it is biochemical and it comes in the form of neurotransmitters. The relationship between a gradually emerging conscious awareness and sophisticated languages in which to formulate representations combined with the desire to maintain biological equilibrium generated the necessity for mimetic equilibrium to fill in conceptual gaps in terms of understanding three very important aspects in the upper paleolithic causality, morality, and mortality. The desire to explain phenomena in relation to maintaining survival and reproductive stasis generated a normative stance in the minds of our ancestors, survival, reproductive value. Huben has argued on several occasions that the exceptional resilience of Vedic ritual and its interaction with the changing ecological and economic environment over several millennia can be profitably dealt with in a cultural evolution perspective in which the Vedic mantra is the meme or unit of cultural replication. This renders superfluous attempts to explain the phenomenon of Vedic tradition in genetic terms. The domain of Vedic ritual should be able to fulfill to a large extent the three challenges posed to mimetics by B. Edmonds.